So what I am going to talk about uh, are human attempts to look for life outside the earth. That is what the word extraterrestrial means and <clears throat> the searches indicates, the plural suggests there have been several attempts and there are continuing to be several attempts uh, in this particular uh, quest. So let us uh, see, when we talk of extraterrestrial, it means outside the earth, so the whole universe is there before you, once you go outside the earth. So how big is the cosmos? So let us take a brief look at the cosmos, the whole universe, to get some idea of how big it is. So we can continue by starting in a hierarchical fashion. So starting from our earth, which you see here on the screen, and the earth is the place from where we are going out. So we first come across the solar system and uh, of course the solar system consists of the sun and eight planets. Some of you will wonder why I put Pluto in it at the end because Pluto has been recently uh, debarred from being in the planetary club. Yeah, he has been made into a dwarf planet. So. What one does, does is there is a no entry sign for Pluto. But still, we have a lot of solar system available. If we go beyond that, we come to the galaxy. The galaxy, the Akash Ganga as we call it in Hindi or Sanskrit, it is <coughs> made up of a large number of stars, about 10 to the power 11 stars, 11 zeros after one. Rather than talk of billions and millions and so on, uh, I prefer it simpler to just go on putting zeros uh, after one. So you have these stars, each dot there in the picture is a star, like the sun. And we are talking about uh, the whole galaxy consisting of 100 billion stars, like the sun. <clears throat> For a long time people thought that there is nothing beyond our Milky Way, beyond our galaxy, and I remember reading some of the old textbooks published about 120 years ago. Uh, these are classic books on astronomy, but in, the, in those books, there is very categorical statement made that once you are inside the galaxy, uh, there is nothing outside. Whole of the universe is part of our galaxy. But that was not the case as more observations suggested. And what you see here uh, is a group of some 20-25 galaxies which form the local group of our Milky Way and other galaxies. So just as you come out from a village, you have a num number of villages nearby. So they form a group and then from there you go out to uh, further bigger uh, units. So that uh, we can see here, uh, the, each dot here is a galaxy. Now, earlier each dot was the sun, now we are choosing galaxy as each dot. And this is a coma cluster of galaxies. And this cluster has several hundred galaxies as part of itself. So there are these clusters of galaxies. <coughs> when I was a student in Cambridge, uh, I had used the concept of hypercluster. Uh, super cluster rather. That is a bigger cluster or cluster of cluster of clusters. So when I and some of my colleagues use this idea, 
many established astronomers said, said that uh, I don't, we don't think there is anything bigger than a cluster in the universe. But in another 10, 20 years, people realize that uh, even, even bigger than clusters, there exist super clusters. So super clusters are there. Today you can ask, is there anything bigger than super cluster? Now, uh, so far the answer is no. But one has to be uh, kind of beware of uh, the past history. Every time man thought he had reached the end of the universe and there is something beyond. So maybe there are hyperclusters, but we have not seen them. Our better, bigger and better telescopes might reveal them. So let us uh, keep the issue open. So if we stop at this stage, then we can ask, <coughs> you can do, do a little bit of a rough calculation on the back of an envelope doesn't require too much of paper. Uh, you can do this in your mind also. <coughs> so there may be around 10 to the power 21 stars, 21 zeros after one. So many stars in the whole universe uh, that we observed that I showed you uh, briefly today. So the question we are asking is, is the sun alone? in hosting life in all the planets, in one of its planets. So the question, are we alone in the universe? If you want to answer it yes, it means you are saying that of all the stars, how many? 21 zeros after one. Uh, only sun has life around it. It sounds somewhat unlikely that it's so many stars are available why should only sun have life on it? But the interesting thing is, if you ask the biologists, many of the biologists think that life itself is such a rare phenomenon that even if you have 10 to the power 21 tries, you may not succeed in repeating it somewhere else. So they think, many, many, uh, many of them think that there are uh, <coughs> no other possibilities of life in the universe. So, let us ask, what do they mean by life? So, life as we know it, uh, you can see, uh, is in the form of the basic structure made up of this complex molecule, which you see like a, uh, if you have a <coughs> minar, uh, minaret, and you are climbing up, you have a winding staircase going up. So this is like a winding staircase and it is a complex atom, a molecule, made up of several component molecules uh, in a very precise fashion. And this is called DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. And the speciality of this structure is that all life on the earth is made up uh, of some kind of DNA uh, as the basic unit. So, <clears throat> so we can ask, uh, do these basic building blocks that make up that DNA, you can see here, this, this is a, like a toy model you want to make in chemistry. You have these little bits to, to connect with. So here you have this kind of structure and we ask, do basic building blocks exist in space? Can we find the units which make up DNA, if not the whole DNA itself, at least the components, are we finding them in the universe? And the answer is yes, we are finding them. Where are we finding them? So you see, uh, and this, here what you got, got is a cloud-like structure, but it is a huge structure. Several, light takes several years to go from one end to the other. It's a huge thing. Now this is called uh, a molecular cloud because inside there are molecules. Uh, chemistry uh, people would know uh, that there are 
some problems for them to solve in, in astronomy. So like astrophysics is the physics of the stars, astrochemistry means you have to wor worry about all these uh, molecules that are found in uh, <coughs> clouds like this. Now there is a episode about this climbing, uh, finding this uh, kind of clouds, which I would like to share with you. Uh, my <coughs> uh, teacher Fred Hoyer, when he was working on some of these ideas, he wrote a paper suggesting that there sh should be molecules found in the galaxy, in our Akash Ganga. And he said there could be chem chemistry, chemical molecules of different kinds, one should look for them. When he wrote this paper, he sent it to physics journal. The physicists rejected it, saying that it was a very uh, speculative paper. They didn't expect molecules to survive outside the protected region of the earth. So they said, Aisa nahi ho sakta. They rejected the paper. So he sent it to an astronomy journal. The astronomy journal also rejected it because nobody had thought of this kind of idea of incorporating chemistry with astronomy. So what to do if you, your paper is not getting published? So he was not uh, sort of daunted by it. He wrote a science fiction novel having that particular idea. And that novel is called The Black Cloud. I would very strongly recommend to everybody to read this novel, which is now up published in Penguin also. And he, he said that uh, in that particular uh, book, uh, novel, there is a plot in which the static molecular cloud plays a big role. I won't tell you the plot itself, very interesting, but I, you should read it yourself. So, so what happens when you have this kind of uh, uh, molecular cloud? Uh, <coughs> people, although they rejected it in the 1950s when Hoyle proposed this idea, uh, in the 1960s and 70s, people began to uh, notice that there are indeed molecules in space because of a special kind of telescope that you see here. It looks like our uh, uh, television antenna type of thing. But this is a bigger one, more sophisticated, and it creates uh, a kind of environment in which you can measure uh, millimeter waves coming from different parts of the galaxy. And the millimeter wavelength radiation that you get can be related to specific molecules and atoms in the galaxy. So this kind of evidence became available and people realized that what Fred Hoyle was talking about was correct. They realized it 10 years later. Anyway, uh, that, that is the situation. Uh, what kind of molecules now you find? There is a uh, table here, uh, inorganic molecules, organic molecules, and as you go down, the molecules increase in size. So there are bigger and bigger molecules as you come down. So when you have this kind of thing, uh, the list doesn't end here. The list continues, but I have no space. So I said, let us uh, give an example by the first nine atom, atom molecules. So we uh, come further and say that these <coughs> molecules which are part of DNA, are available in cosmos. So you are, what you call, uh, working material is there. Somebody can make life out of it. Okay, we are, we are, we are progressing. But then the question comes, uh, where will this happen? What is a suitable environment? 
So you say you need energy for this. We, we need energy for practically anything interesting to happen. So where is the energy coming from? So you say energy comes from stars like the sun. But you cannot go and live on the star because it is too hot. So you choose a planet which goes around the star. So you, what you need is a planetary system around stars and then you have a greater chance of making life. So uh, we can ask this question, how, what is the number of extraterrestrial super civilizations in the galaxy? How many stars are there? We know, we just saw how many stars are there in our galaxy. Some of them may have uh, what you call uh, uh, planets going round. Now till 1991 there were no planets known about other stars. But now we know that there are thousands of uh, planets around other stars. So you, the situation has changed and it is only how many people can watch and look for them, uh, they will find more. It's not that the number is run out. So people are uh, doing a special job looking for planets around other stars. So Frank Drake in 1960 or 65 suggested an equation to determine the answer to this question. Now when I talk on this topic and I come to this stage, I, have, I feel it wise to uh, tell the audience beforehand not to get worried by the word equation. Many of them who are not very comfortable with mathematics, they feel equation So the question is, uh, don't worry, this equation is very simple, what Drake had uh, written. So let's see what it is. It's called Drake's equation. Uh, that is made up of several factors. This, there is this, this, each star is an into multiplication, nothing more. So what Drake said was, if you know all these factors, multiply them, you will get the total number of super civilizations in our galaxy. So uh, he said, simple, as simple as that, but uh, right hand side is not so simple. <laughs> Left hand side is all right, and right hand side, you have to go on uh, working very hard. So what happens? If you take R, the first factor, I'll just give you one or two examples. Uh, it is the average rate of star formation in the galaxy. And the, uh, uh, what, what I would say is that uh, the stars are showing a greater self-control on production than humans are doing on the earth. So one star per year is the rate of formation of new stars in the galaxy. And how do you know where new stars are being born? As you see here, this is a uh, reserve as a kind of a uh, molecular cloud again uh, and there are certain regions where strong infrared radiation is coming. So you can say these are very young stars which are there. <coughs> Just as if you go into a town you find adults and babies. Let me uh, continue <coughs> with this maternity home of uh, stars. Here I, I mentioned that uh, you get certain regions where infrared radiation is coming, which is the signal to tell you that these, these are young stars. Now how young are these baby stars? They are about one lakh year old, that's all. So the, in the ages, age structure of stars, Remember that the sun is much more older than one lakh. Uh, it is about four point five billion years. So compared to the sun, uh, one lakh is very very low. In fact, if you take the ratio, you will find uh, a maternity home baby of 
a few hours old compared to the age of a uh, person, let's say the baby's father, maybe about 30, 35 years old. So that ratio is something like what you get for the stars compared to the sun. Anyway, so you continue with this. Fraction of stars that are good suns, uh, good S-U-N, not S-O-N. Uh, <laughs> that means they are helping the uh, fostering of life. <clears throat> then fraction of good stars with planetary systems. As I have told you, there are many people who will get to know where the planetary systems start to round the planet. So, we will see the number of planets per star within a quotient. Simply having good planets is not enough. Planets should have an atmosphere and conditions which are conducive to life. Then, fraction of the, those planets on which life will develop. So even if you got everything right, we still don't know what makes life. So that should be there. The fraction of living species that develop intelligence. After uh, the life has developed, the, your next worry is that is it going to be intelligent? That is what all the parents worry about their baby, kaisa banega, so we are, then we go to a level that it has become intelligent and also developed good technology so that it can communicate by radio and other electromagnetic waves, so that should happen. And the most important last point is Lifetime in communicative phase. Having reached a very high level, how long will this civilization last? Now you will think that if the civilization has become very advanced, its medical science will have progressed so, so that no uh, illnesses are uh, there to worry anybody. They, they will have a solution to everything. and. Uh, People will live in very comfortable surroundings. All these you think. But what you forget is that there is also uh, an improvement, or if the, that is in inverted comma, you call it improvement or progress of destructive technology. That you produce things which are going to cause a lot of destruction. And as you know, uh, this mushroom cloud uh, is something that threatens all life on the earth, which did not, it did not about 100 years ago. So you see that uh, a lifetime is very important. So the answer depends on estimates for various fractions made, factors made by individuals and varies between one and several billion. So Drake's equation solved Karnepar, you will find some are getting an answer very small, some are getting very large because they put their own preferred values for all those factors. So we, we can say that this is uh, all uh, theoretical speculation. Let us ask practically how can we choose, how can we detect life and communicate with it. So uh, how can we search for them? So one method that you might immediately think of and having seen a lot of space movies, uh, you will feel that that should happen. You see here, uh, astronaut landing on the moon. Why not send the same spaceship to the nearest star and look around the planets? They may find some people living there. So the question is, how long, how far is that star? The star is about four and a quarter light years away. That means light takes four and a quarter years to go to that stars. How long does it uh, take to go to the uh, moon? It's about uh, uh, what, uh, what I call little over one, one and a quarter second, not years, second. 
So to where the moon is so near and we take two days to go there. If we are planning a journey for four and a half light years away object, uh, how long will that spaceship take? You can do this uh, ratio and proportion problem. Uh, I think it ch children should be given such problems in school to make them belonging to space age. So what happens? You ask uh, this question, uh, you, how long will it take? The straightforward answer is several hundred thousand years, several lakh years. Let us say one lakh years. That means if you want to send this person uh, in a spaceship, that spaceship is going to travel for one lakh years before it reaches its destination. So how will it live for one lakh years? So you say it's called deep freeze kar denge. <laughs> when you deep freeze food, it lasts much longer. So you deep freeze it at very, very low temperature so that it might survive when it reaches to the hundred uh, that uh, uh, star which is nearest. And then it, you un unfreeze the whole thing and he wakes up and after the initial in Hindi movie, Mai Kaha Ho, uh, all this, he gets up and starts looking at surroundings, maybe find something and then the, he freezes himself back and the spacecraft comes back to us. Although I said us, the we will not be around here because two lakh years have gone. None of us are going to be here. So this is not going to work out as a means of search for intelligence. So what do you do? What is the best way? So you can, well, you may think, send a uh, spaceship. Uh, the people thought of this thing. They sent a spaceship with nothing on it but information about the Earth. The idea is that the extraterrestrial is much more superior to us. He will be able to find this thing and come and look for us. So instead of our going to look for him, we make it easier for him to find us. So this can be done, uh, but uh, as you you are aware, uh, some people raised a complaint that you are observing, you are destroying the security of the earth. Because if they, these extraterrestrials can come and look for us, they will come to the earth and say, what a nice place to live. These people are not uh, appreciating the ecology and uh, destroying it, let us make them uh, our uh, uh, slaves and we will rule here. So we will uh, lose all our control on the earth. That is what people have complained. But st so far this is not a very, what I would call, a very significant point because to find such a little object in a vast universe is going to be very hard and with very little chance this will succeed. So uh, what we do uh, is send messages with the speed of light from the earth and here is this thing uh, sending out messages about ourselves. Uh, we can also have the, the biggest such system is in Arecibo uh, where this dish is dug into the <coughs> ground. It has got thousand feet diameter. So it's a 300 meter diameter dish and its focus, focal point is over here. Uh, when I went to Arecibo, I wanted to go and see this observatory. So they took me there and then they said, do you want to go here? Uh, so I said, is it possible to go? They said, yes, if you have head for heights, that means you shouldn't go to the so so I said, no, I think I can manage. So I, I was taken from, the, the, there is a passage here, and it's quite safe. It's not that uh, difficult, but it is very unusual. You go to that height, and then you see this whole dish staring at you. 
So it's a very spectacular thing and uh, people have been using it. And the kind of message can be digitized and you see here a human being standing on the third planet from the sun. This is sun. So some information has been given. Obviously you cannot write anything in English or any other language because the extraterrestrial won't know that. But extraterrestrial must know mathematics, must know physics and chemistry. So you have put something over here. Uh, so this happens and uh, we can uh, ask uh, by radio messages can we contact the extraterrestrial. The people are doing it now. For the last 30 years this has been happening. Now what happens is you send a message and the reply may come. Uh, the question is which channel do you look for? Just as on the TV if you want to watch some match you know it is such and such channel, you go there. If not, you have to surf the whole channel and somewhere you find it. So here what you do is you leave it to the computer uh, and the channels, the number is million. So there is a equipment which has million channels and the computer is hooked to all the channels. If it finds something significant in one channel, it will show and uh, you can then analyze it. So this has been going on. This is called uh, SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence and one hopes that this may succeed in giving a signal at some stage. Uh, but it demands patience because if you send a message like this, hello I am from the earth speaking, is anybody out there? And you send this to Alpha Centauri, it's like calling your nearest neighbor on phone. So when you call the neighbor on the phone, the phone, the neighbor replies, uh, hello, greeting from Alpha Centauri, we read you loud and clear, but that message will come back 8.5 years later. So you have to keep holding the receiver for eight and a half years. Uh, although you don't do that, you put a computer attached to it and it will do the job. However, uh, it, in, even so, uh, it is still a long-term affair. One hopes that in our lifetime we might find something positive. But we can look for something more definitive uh, relatively easily and this is where I will end by uh, talking about some of the experiment we are doing under support from uh, ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. So what we are searching for are not these super intelligent people, but we are looking for cells, bacteria, uh, viruses. Uh, are they coming to earth from outside the earth? This is the question we want to ask. And the, the scientist Fred Hoyle again and Vikrama Singh, his colleague and student, former student, they said that you can have them coming riding on a uh, comet. When the cometary tail opens out, these uh, bacteria which are on the comet, they will go on to the end of the tail and if the tail brushes the Earth's atmosphere, they will be transferred to Earth's atmosphere and then they will descend by gravity. So the question was, can we find such <coughs> cometary uh, 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 bacteria coming from uh, the remote parts of the solar system. So here are different uh, layers of the uh, atmosphere and people, uh, some of us decided to do the study of heights of the order of 40 to 50 kilometers. Because it is high enough to still have enough density to have bacteria present. Uh, if you go very high, then the density is extremely low, so the bacteria don't survive there, don't remain there, they will just fall. And if you go very low, you will certainly increase the number, but then people will say you are catching up bacteria from the earth and not there, they are coming from the top. So the middle layer uh, is stratosphere, which you see here. 
this kind of band and we managed to uh, do this with the help of a balloon which goes up to 41 km height. So <coughs> to establish whether such a population of bacteria exists. So it's called the Isros cryosampler experiment and you see this balloon and uh, the balloon is carrying, going to carry a payload as it goes up and uh, the payload consists of these stainless steel tubes which you are seeing here. Uh, they are sealed and uh, originally they are evacuated, there is nothing inside and when the, you take them to a given height you issue a command and they will open one tube and the pump will automatically fill the uh, whatever air is around into that uh, 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 stainless steel tube and then you seal it and when all the tubes are filled up like that you bring the whole thing down by uh, parachute. So this is the uh, thing uh, and the analysis is done. I, I will skip the details of technique of analysis but I will show you what it looks like. You see living cells at height of 41 kilometers and they are detected by fluorescent uh, spots which come out when they are bombarded with ultraviolet light. There are, this is another example, the blue patches you see. So uh, we also uh, find that there are uh, uh, the, this, this was found in Sheffield by using our sample which was we did distributed to many laboratories. So they found uh, this kind of bacteria. These are, some are spherical, some are, uh, let's see. Some are long like snakes. So all these bacteria are uh, found there and a fungus which is on the right hand side here. So these are uh, tested for their uh, nature and they can be identified. So when, when we do this, uh, the question is how did they come into the tube? They did not come from this neighborhood uh, lab because they were all sealed. So we feel that they have come from above. But people said do more experiments to convince us. So we took uh, another uh, thing, uh, another, uh, this is a second experiment, similar payload is taken. It is being taken for uh, launching. Uh, again, you see here, there is a balloon here. I don't know whether you can make it, but there is the payload attached to it and this whole thing is going to be released. This is the part of the payload and what this time we found two labs uh, were given this work. One CCMB in Hyderabad and the other NCCS in Pune. And they found uh, a number of bacteria, 12 bacterial and 6 fungal colonies and they also did the chem biochemical uh, analysis and they found a lot of interesting results. But uh, what I should point out that three bacterial species were completely new. They were not existing on the earth before, at least not seen on the earth before. So they were named. The people who discover bacteria are entitled to name them. So we decided uh, to name them. One was called Janibacter hoyli, the other was called Bacillus aryabatae, and third was called Bacillus isronesis. So first was to commemorate Hoyle, the second was to commemorate uh, uh, Aryabhata, our first major uh, astronomer uh, in fifth century, and Bacillus isronesis to commemorate Isro for Isro's help to us. So when we com complete this thing, the question 
that comes up is we have found some new bacteria they did not exist on the earth moreover as i i forgot to mention they survive ultraviolet light so if you put ultraviolet on them they don't die whereas all of us will be gone if we had a zone of ultraviolet on us so the question is are they extraterrestrial what you are getting uh, although we think they are uh, further tests are needed so what we are planning to do is to do a uh, analysis of a bacteria picked up from this space to look at carbon isotope ratios so carbon 16 carbon 12 carbon 13 carbon 14 Uh, what are the ratios if they turn out to be different from that on the earth then these are bound to be extraterrestrial so we are waiting for this to happen and uh, our next experiment will be designed to precisely do this thing i think i will uh, stop here and uh, thank you for your patience uh, this work is going on maybe after a couple of years when we have analyzed the data with the new experiment you will call me again to give it off thank you very much